Ah, oh, right yo then guys. So, cause some people were complaining because you didn't have any videos of me doing it. What we got to do is, um, if you can see in the back wall, it looks a little bit patchy. So, uh, it's about one o'clock in the afternoon now. I've got to rub it down really quick with some 60 or 80, um, uh, like 80 grit or something, just to give it a bit of a key. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix some more top coat and just gonna give it another coat all over because now it's gone off, that's where I started and I was panicking quite a lot because I didn't actually know what was the cure time on the, on the top coat, but it turned out I had actually loads and loads of time. It went off in about two hours, which is amazing. So what I'm gonna do is, just to make sure everything's good, I'm gonna literally hit all of the big surfaces again um, with another batch of flow coat. I got loads and loads of flow coat. It's gonna take me a little while just to sand all of this down to key it up and then I'm gonna hit it and then I'm gonna be 100% sure it's waterproof. So really, really chuffed. Um, the bio chamber is absolutely fine. So, um, cause I had loads left over in a bucket and I really put it on thick. The rest of it is all okay. It's really just that wall. But what I'm gonna do is, out of courtesy, is just do the whole pond a lot again. So what I'll do is I'll mix up a good batch of probably about, about six liters of top coat, smash it all around. Nothing else to do on this fine afternoon. So um, yeah, let's see what's occurring. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna talk about my light because everyone wants to know about my light and I keep forgetting to mention it, but it's not rocket science. It's really easy to get fantastic bit of kit. Let's get this done quick because it's forecast for rain tomorrow. So I don't want anything splashing in uh, when I'm doing it, if I was doing it tomorrow. So let's get it done now. Hitting you at all the angles in the pond. So there we are, little roll of 40 grit. Like I said, not gonna go to town with this. Literally just gonna hammer it all around. Um, Cause I'm conscious. Lovely. I'm conscious that the temperature is just right at the moment. What I did do as well, guys, is I actually put that spin drift drain on as well, just to see what it looked like. It looked actually quite nice. So, uh, and I'm really looking forward to doing stuff like sticking my things down and all that. <laughs> Exciting times are coming, guys. So I'm not gonna bore you with any more of that rubbing down, but effectively it's that. Hoover up, rub it down with acetone, and I'll be back. Oh, there we are then guys. All rubbed down, sweating like a gypsy with a mortgage again. So um, it's good to get down and inspect everything anyway, because you can actually see a few little imperfections. Like again, my first, third time doing this, but it's a big pond. So what I'm gonna do now is get the old Henry out, give it a hoover, give it a wipe down with acetone. Actually, I'm gonna, I am gonna wipe, uh, brush down the bio chamber as well. Cause if I've got any left over, I may as well hit that again. Like it's not gonna do any harm. So uh, yeah, lovely jubbly. Uh, yeah, I think I'll have a Diet Coke first now. I want to break free. Feel a bit like that Queen video. So all I'm doing here, guys, is just hoovering up all the excess dust that's fallen onto the surface. And then uh, 
uh, from there what I'm going to do is um, give it a good wipe down with some acetate. There we are guys. Bucket full of acetone. Make sure there is no naked flames around this stuff because it is highly flammable. And then you know, wash the whole lot down now. Get rid of all that dust. So I go around all the walls once and then all the floor. Uh, yeah, thought I'd do a step by step because someone on my last video commented saying, <laughs> suggesting that I had, uh, I don't know, a little fiberglass in theories helping me. Trust me. I wish that was so. I'm an honest person. Possibly too honest. I told my missus once I had a wet dream over RuPaul. And truth be known, I was considering joining the Royal Marines before I joined the Paris, but I couldn't let my family name down because obviously my granddad and uh, my uncle was in the Paris. So it was something that I had to do. Let's get this finished. Oof, that acetone is strong, guys. In that bio chamber, I had to hold my breath and do down the bottom. That is disgusting. But anyway, come to think of it, my missus looks a bit like RuPaul. So maybe there is something there. Anyway, um, let's... It's prepped, guys. It's prepped. So what we're going to do now is have a little bit of, little bit of Coca-Cola. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so now you've got to be 100% ready when you're doing this and you've got to prep everything. You've got to make sure your roller's ready. You've got to make sure you've got everything ready before you get in here with that flow coat because you have only got a certain amount of time. To be honest, the first time I did the flow coat with a different brand in the other pond, it was going off quick as shit. But um, this one, even with 2% catalyst, which I'm putting in at the moment, uh, is absolutely going off. It's given me loads of time and it, it's actually gone off perfect. There is a few little pinholes, so I'm glad that I am doing another, another coat. And uh, I want to thank Kenneth for, uh, for, for, for opening my eyes to that. And I'm going to give you his details after this. So they work, there's three of them, they work nationwide, they're extremely busy. They work with really reputable companies like Quality Initiative Guy and others. And uh, yeah, they're... Um, Customer service is really good. Like I said, he was on the phone to me for about half an hour last night. Really, really nice guy. He's from up Yorkshire way. Uh, North Yorkshire. Always Northerners, aren't they? Weird. And, um, but he certainly knows what he's talking about. So, uh, like I said, the customer service with that guy is really, really nice. And I'm not even his customer. So, uh, I'm not getting anything out of it. But what he has done, he's put me on the straight and narrow. He's given me some really essential information. And he didn't need to. He didn't need to, but he has, and I really respect him for that. So thank you very much, Kenneth, and the other two lads. Never met them, but uh, he did say he'd come down and do my quarantine ponds in the garage when I want to do those next year. So that's amazing. So that's absolutely fantastic. So anyway, hopefully I'll get to meet the chap in person. So let's get this coat, this top coat down. I'm going to do exactly the same mix, 20% catalyst, because the sun's coming out. And I was really conscious like yesterday because I had a full day in work today. I went to work super early. I've been at work since, well, half five. Brought my customer forward, finished him so I could get back and do this. So I'm not a slob. I don't sit on the couch all day or just do pond bills. I do actually work, literally. So um, anyway, let's get this done. She does look a bit like RuPaul. So again guys, this is one of the reasons why I didn't film yesterday. I, you know, you're just full of rubbish all the time. So what I'm doing here guys is um, mixing the catalyst with the top coat. Very, very good. Getting into all the nooks and crannies. So what I've done is I've, um, I've measured out five litres of top coat. I put 20% or 2% um, uh, catalyst in there. 
but I do a real, real, real good mix. Clean that off, stick it out the way, and off we go to the pond. And let's get my mask on. I can guarantee you, you're gonna need one of those. Um, Jesus, it's uh, so obviously it's not gone off yet. Hell of a cinch. Um, as you can see there, a little bit of a time lapse for those people who wanted it. You know who you are. Um, and like again, I, I've got to apologize, guys. Uh, a few people have gone, oh, I liked you have gone to uh, more in depth in, in the fiberglassing process. Trust me, I'm not the one you want to listen to about fiberglassing. That is a happy mistake. I've done it again by accident, correctly. Not even correctly. What I had to do is go in again and actually give it another rub down because a professional had told me, you've got some pinholes in there, pal. You need to get that done pretty quick. Otherwise it might leak. Just give it a rub down, acetone, clean it, and then, um, and then recoat it. So I have. Just put another 10 litres on there. Um, again, feel warm inside knowing that I've done that correctly, but it is looking absolutely lovely now. It's all proper on there, you know. Yeah. I, I don't think I could do personally any more than that. Um, it is what it is. I'll inspect it again once it's all gone off. If I can find any pinholes, which I, you know, it's very difficult to see when it's shiny. When it goes off, you can see it a little bit easier. Um, if I can find any pinholes, I'll rub it down. I'll suppose I'll, what I'll have to do is make up a little batch. Like again, not an expert, but I've had a go and it's worked out okay. So, um, like I said, I do apologize for not doing a real in-depth step-by-step, you know, um, Again, how can you, like, I'm, I'm just in a puddle of goo, so I can't really use my phone. I, I can't even do this properly. It's really stressful, to be honest, and I'm not one to be stressed out. I'll tell you what stress is, being stuck behind a bun line in the middle of Afghanistan, being whacked at by an RPK, that's stress. This isn't so much stress. It's not any lives on the line, but it's still kind of stressful because you know in the back of your mind, if you haven't done this properly, it's not the end of the world, but what would be the end of the world is taking it back off. Imagine if that just doesn't set and it goes off and it doesn't go off and you get under cure and you've got to get all that goo off. Mate, that would literally want me to just turn this into a shed. I just start woodworking here or something. But um, again, apologize. There's plenty of experts out there on YouTube to watch. Um, Again, I'm, you know, hats off to the experts. And um, for anybody who is interested uh, in getting an expert doing it, um, like I said, you can get um, Jack the Balding Reefer does packs. So he will um, price you up for the size of your pond, send you everything you need on his website, Balding Reefer. Um, Balding Reefer, just text him. Uh, and uh, also, if you want a professional, there's um, a lovely guy called Kenneth, Unique Fiber Glassing. So, um, yeah, check those out, they're nationwide. And like I said, thank you very much, Kenneth, for, for everything you've done and, and let me know about these things. And for other people who've told me about certain products as well. So, uh, anyway, I'm gonna go and take the family down the beach for some more fish and chips. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna celebrate with some fish and chips guys on the beach with the family and take the dog for a lovely walk because to be honest, truth be told, 
the last weekend I've been reasonably stressed um, haven't shown it but what I've been in is just in here they haven't seen Wolf hasn't seen his dad for about three days so uh, um, yeah it's about time we uh, we bonded um, I think that's all I've got to say guys to be honest um, anyway thanks for watching this little update hopefully it's not too long hopefully you want to watch it not much going on sun's coming out I'm going to the beach fish and chips time so guys to celebrate my success in fiberglassing we're, <laughs> we're having fish and chips at the beach yeah boy is that nice Wolfie hot is that hot <laughs> <laughs>